Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, it's your Kiwi Connection here, Kevmo7, and today we are putting up the reference R9290X against Asus's Direct CU2 non-reference 290X. So this will be interesting mainly because this is our first uh, reference versus non-reference 290X showdown, but also because the DirectCU2 coolers that were previously tested on the R9 290 and 280X have performed very poorly, especially compared to the competition, and uh, sometimes, in the case of the 290, very poorly even compared to the reference design. So this will be interesting to see how the 290X uh, DirectCU2 does. So the differences between these cards are kind of minute, really, aside from the obvious cooler. There's a slight difference in GPU speeds with the reference 290X coming in at 1000 MHz and the Asus Direct CU2 coming in at 1050 MHz, so 50 MHz bump up there. Remember this is the uh, fully unlocked uh, Hawaii GPU, same as the one you get in the 290, but the 290 is like a slightly cut down version. Um, and there's also a difference in the memory. Now this is a little bit bigger, so the reference card has the same memory as the 290. Uh, but it, it's clocked at the same as a, a reference 290 as well, 5000 megahertz. And this Asus Direct C2 is clocked at 5400 megahertz on the memory, so 400 megahertz bump up there, which is quite nice. The Direct C2 also has uh, better capacitors and uh, th the components are slightly of a higher quality than the reference model, which is better for our overclocking, but it also just improves the lifespan of the card as well, so that's something to take into uh, consideration. And of course the cooler itself. So the Direct C2 cooler is getting quite, hmm, I wouldn't say famous, or notorious, it's kind of in the middle. A lot of people like it and a lot of people don't like it. Personally I think it looks awesome and this one's good too because you can switch out the colors as I explained in the unboxing video. It has a standard fan at one side and then closer to uh, the exhaust of the card is the Cooltech fan which is a hybrid fan which pushes some of the air through the fins like normal and some out, kind of like a reference model. It also has good looking um, heat sinks and a big 10 millimeter heat pipe coming out the top, so that's good. And uh, has a backplate as well, which is nice too. So it's an awesome looking card, and I've always liked the Direct CU2s all the way back to the Triple Slot 7970, um, and that looked awesome as well. So I do like the look, but its performance, uh, that's where it really comes down to. So well, let's get straight into the benchmarks now and see how it did. So, first up is Fermark. Now, I run this for 15 minutes. It's on uh, 4 times MSAA. And the reference 290X scored 35 frames per second, which is pretty good. This is at 1080p. The DirectC2 290X from ASUS scored 36, so one frame better, although we don't usually see big discrepancies in Fermark. Now onto Unigen Valley. This is on the Extreme HD preset. The 290X reference model scored 61.1 frames per second. The uh, 290X DC2 Direct C2 scored 62.7 frames per second. So, you know, one and a half frames there, almost. Um, yeah, not that big of a difference. Now, Heaven 4.0, this is in DirectX 11, everything maxed out. The Reference 290X scored 54 frames per second. The Non-Reference Direct C2 290X scored 55.9, so let's just call that two frames there for the Direct C2. Now, Heaven again, this is uh, in OpenGL, once again everything maxed out. The Reference 290X. 38.5 frames per second. The Direct C2 290X, 40 frames per second. So you're starting to see a little bit of pattern, it's about 1.5, 2 frames here and there. This is a lot lower than I expected, considering uh, not really with the GPU bump up, but that memory bump up usually increases it quite a bit. Now to some games. So Tomb Raider, this is everything maxed out uh, on Ultra without VSync. The 
reference 290x, 81.9 frames per second average. The direct C2 290x, 85.2 frames per second average. So that one was a little bit bigger. And lastly, Bioshock Infinite. Now I've changed my benchmark for this one. So before I did have everything maxed out. However, I didn't have ambient inclusion uh, on. So I decided to try it with it on and it brought the frames down a bit. But it gives you a better idea because it's a lot more load on the GPU of um, how much power it has. So I'm going to start using that one from now on. Although all my 290 ones, since I've already been doing it, uh, with it how it was will stay the same but for future benchmarks and the difference cards I'll be using it with this new um, setting which truly is everything maxed out so the reference 290x scored 94.2 frames per second and the direct C2 290x scored 97.8 frames per second so quite a, a decent difference there. You see it's a lot lower where the 290 is always scoring around 110 plus um, so it's just going to bring it down a bit, a bit more load and we should see a bit more difference. So that concludes the benchmark. So we can see performance wise it's maybe on average call it 2-3 frames better for the Direct C2 so not much there. Now on to temperatures. Now this is the really important one and uh, yeah we'll see if the um, DirectC2 has followed suit with the 280X and 290 for doing very bad in temperatures. Well, I ran in Fermark, this is again when I was doing the 15 minute benchmark, and I take the highest temperature I see. So this is the maximum temperature it reaches. Most of the time, the maximum temperature it will get to and then it will just hold there. So it's not like it spikes for a second and I take that temperature. It usually goes up to a certain temperature and it'll hold and that's the temperature I take and that's the fan speed I take. So the reference 290X went up to 94 degrees Celsius at 57% fan speed. This is obviously in Uber mode. So that's to be expected. The reference card will run up to its thermal limit which is 95 degrees so that's to be expected now the direct C2 in Fermark ran up to 92 degrees Celsius at 60 percent fan speed so this is the first one I've tested where it actually hasn't hit the thermal limit in Fermark so that's quite amazing although 92 is getting close so it was only two degrees off two three degrees off hitting its thermal limit and then it will start throttling another thing so I have no idea why this is because to the best of my knowledge this is ex the exact same cooler that's on the 290 so I have no idea why my 290 hit the thermal limit quite easily and this one didn't and it, and it was going up quite slowly too it was sort of sitting like 87 88 89 for quite a while and then it started going into the 90s so maybe this is slightly revised um, maybe this is something different I'm not sure maybe it's just luck of the draw you might get a direct C2 that's actually better at cooling than others so who knows um, so that was in Fermark, and then I also took the highest temperature I saw during the Heaven 4.0 DirectX 11 benchmark, and the reference card went up to 94 degrees, and that benchmark, so the thermal limit again. With the Direct C2 only went up to 80 degrees Celsius, and that's the one that will probably be more closer to what you'd see in a game. Fermark is more like a torture test, so this is the like worst case scenario. And that's why I do it, to see uh, how cool they can keep the card. But then I do the heaven as well, to show you what's more realistic for, you know, if you were playing a game, what you go up to. So that's actually very good, and I'm absolutely surprised that it did that. Um, so this one, for some reason, did. But I give no assurances that if you bought a 290X Direct C2, that yours would be the same, because it just seems all over the place with these cards, honestly. So now that we're done with temperatures, let's get into the noise. And this one I can say firmly because the 290 uh, Direct C2 was the same. These Asus cars are excellent with the noise. There's no other way to put it. Compared to the reference, it is so quiet. Um, you can barely hear it when it's on idle. And even in games, it doesn't even ramp up. Even during that Fermat benchmark where the fan speed went to 60%, uh, which is 3% more than the reference went, it was, you know like a third of the noise 
So it definitely wins and noise. I have to give it, but I'll let you judge for yourself. So this is what the reference 290X sounds like at idle. And this is what the non-reference DirectC2 290X sounds like at idle. And here are the cards on load. So this is during the Unigen Valley Extreme HD benchmark. So here is the reference 290X during the benchmark. And here is the non-reference direct CU2 290X during the benchmark. So you can tell, uh, on load it's definitely a lot quieter. I, I have to give it the 100% and the 290 as this card was the same even though it performed poorly in the temperatures and I'm not saying this one did outstanding either, it's, it's better than the last but it's nothing mind blowing. Especially when we see the Tri-X 290 only gets to say 78 degrees during Fermark and you know 70 during um, the other benchmarks. So, but definitely it wins in noise. So overall, what do I say? Well, it's difficult. The performance gains are not as big as you would probably like. Two or three frames doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. And because it still runs pretty hot, the Asus card probably won't offer much in terms of overclocking unless you're going to run a ridiculously aggressive fan curve. The big benefit with the Asus card, aside from its looks, is obviously the noise, so it's much less noisy than the reference. So I would say, I would put it this way, if you're not into overclocking, um, then it's basically a choice on noise. So temperature-wise, the Asus does, uh, ten does still get quite hot, but it probably won't throttle as much, but as I said, it only seemed to give about extra two three frames because of that so it's just noise really if you have to pick out these two cards and say they were the same price then obviously go for the Asus but they're probably not going to be the same price so if it's an extra however much it is you're basically paying for it. do you want a loud card or do you want a silent card now for people that are looking to overclock it's still hard to say because it does run quite hot so as I said you're going to probably have to run a very aggressive fan curve to, or, in order to keep it cool but honestly, I'd probably, I haven't tested them yet, but I'd probably still uh, look towards another non-reference card because this one runs quite hot. So, and I'll hopefully bring you more reviews of non-reference 290Xs uh, further down the road. So that's what i got to say. It basically comes down to noise. If you like me and you don't mind the reference cards because you just wear headphones, then that's fine. Just do that. Just wear headphones. And then you can't even hear the card. But if noise is a thing, you don't like wearing headphones, you have really nice speakers or something like that, and you just want the computer quiet and seeing the game and listen all your nice um, sounds and that like that on your speakers, then the ASUS is better because obviously there's um, very little noise by comparison to the reference to 90X. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it, uh, it was educational and you learned something or helped you decide between these two cards. And I'll catch you guys next time.